Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twist. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cinderella is Evil. And we're now on chapter two. Ow! I muttered as the needle pricked my finger yet again. For all the time I'd spent doing needlework, I was still not good at it. My pieces never looked complete. Only that they could have been done by a five-year-old. Actually, a five-year-old could probably do much better. Out the window, I spotted Cinderella. She was in the vegetable garden, picking out carrots. Mud was caked on the bottom of her dress and shoes. She never had to worry about being ladylike. She could do whatever she pleased on the estate. It was annoying and completely unfair. If Sally and I had to have rules, then so should she. But not Cinderella. She was too perfect. Anna, did you hear? Zelly burst through the door, snapping my head in her direction. I put the needlework down, glad of the interruption. What was I supposed to hear about? I asked. Completely in the dark. Nobody told me, so it didn't surprise me. The king is putting on a ball. Every girl in the kingdom is invited. She twirled around in a circle with the thought of dancing all night in the palace. Oh, I replied. I was sure it wasn't the answer she was hoping for. I didn't want to go to a stupid ball where nobody would dance with me. All it would mean would be sore feet from standing around. I'm not going. You have to. The king has invited us all. We cannot refuse his kind invitation. Zelly sat on the chair beside mine. There are rumours he's trying to find a wife as a prince. Can you imagine getting to dance with Prince Charming? It will be magical. I'm sure the prince won't find a wife just by dancing with all the girls in the kingdom. Why do you have to be so sour? It will be fun. Can't you just get excited? She crossed her arms and then started to sulk. I shall be excited when there is something to be excited about. This is not it. Well, you have to go. Mother has ordered us to. We are to go and be lovely and wonderful and find husbands, Zelly said defiantly. I shouldn't have been surprised. Of course, Mother would see it as an opportunity to marry off her desperate daughters. Still, I didn't have to like it. Fine. Is Cinderella going? Every girl is invited. We both looked out at the window at our stepsister. She wouldn't have a problem getting twenty marriage proposals if she tried. We had no chance. I spent the next four days hearing every little detail about the ball that Mother had managed to find out. She actually left the house, which I hadn't seen her do in a long time. She spoke with all the other ladies, trying to find out any detail she could that would give us a head start on the other girls. I knew my mother meant well, but she didn't really, well, understand what it was like to attend those balls. She was always beautiful. She still was, even though she was in her forties now. People looked at me and they only saw the ugliness that was on the outside. They never got a chance to find out what I was really like on the inside. Unfortunately, no amount of makeup could hide my skin problems. Despite how much my mother kicked my face, it was humiliating. A ball, like the king's, was just another chance for others to look at me and pretend they didn't see me. Or that one glance at me wouldn't put them off their meal. It would be a torturous evening. I could say that without being able to see the future in a crystal ball. Yet our dresses arrived anyway, and the tailor fit them to our bodies. Mine was too tight, as usual. Mother ordered them that way, so I wouldn't overheat in the lead-up. I wasn't fat. I would like to be clear on that. But in her eyes, I was. The thought only made me hungry for something sweet, like a piece of cake or pie. Cinderella also got fitted for a gown. It was not as fancy as Zelly's dress or mine, but it was still a wonderful but a yellow colour. She would look good in anything. Even if she went to the ball in her house dress, she would still be noticed. And she would be sure to let us know all about it. I didn't know what all the fuss was about for one prince. I saw him once at the palace. Mother took us there for the winter feast celebrations. He sat on his throne and didn't talk to anybody. 
It appeared he liked to sulk just as much as Zelly. Perhaps they would make a good couple. I knew I certainly wouldn't be suited to him. If I were to marry, which apparently I had to, because I didn't get a choice in that matter. I wanted a man who was strong and adventurous. I wanted a husband that was fun. I didn't care about what his wife was wearing or how she must be ladylike at all times. I wanted a partner in crime, someone to enjoy life with. Not someone who told me I must be something I was not. Prince Charming definitely didn't fall into that category. In fact, I was certain that all the men my mother had tried to introduce me to didn't fit. Perhaps I was destined to be a spinster. I hope you're not daydreaming again, Mother interrupted. My thoughts reminded me I was trying to sit still while she fussed with my hair. Dreaming is for peasants. Now remind me what you must say to the prince. I wasn't exactly paying attention to a lecture. What was it? Oh, what was it I was supposed to say? Something about my stepfather? I must say that my stepfather was Lord Trevain, and I am pleased to meet him. She pulled my hair a bit harder than necessary. Say he was your father. It will make it sound better. Lord Trevain was a friend of the king. He will think you are somebody special. You have to fool him in order to reel him in like a big fat fish. Yes, mother. Oh, my dear girl, do you even want to please your mother? She sighed as I wondered what I had done wrong this time. Of course I do, but I fear nothing I do will please you. I searched her face in the mirror, trying to determine how the rest of the conversation would go. Half the time, I expected her to give up on me and try harder with Zelly. She had a better chance with her. Mother finished with my last curl and took a step away, making sure my hair was sufficiently bound for the ball tomorrow. You can please me by finding a husband tomorrow night. I turned around to face her. I was either being incredibly stupid or incredibly brave. I wasn't sure. Why is it so important that I find a husband? Do you not love me as I am? Do I need a man to make me lovable? She looked me directly in the eyes with a love that I hadn't seen for a very long time. Perhaps the mother I knew wasn't completely lost to her grief. I want you to find happiness, just like I did. A husband gives you comfort and security, something I fear I cannot offer you for much longer. What do you mean? A pit was forming in the bottom of my stomach. What was she talking about? I feared to hear the answer, and yet I needed to know at the same time. Our money is running out. She cast her eyes downwards, staring at her hands. This house is expensive to keep. We need new money, and I am too old to remarry. It's up to you and Zelly now. What about Cinderella? Can't she get married too? You know her loyalty was to her father. She doesn't care about the, this family like we do. We can't count on her to save us. I nodded, understanding. If the roles were reversed, I would probably have felt the same. Would it be so bad if we had to live in smaller accommodations? Mother looked horrified. I had my answer before. She even needed to speak. We have Lord Trevain's memory to uphold. We will continue with the life we have grown accustomed to. I let it go. I knew I wouldn't be able to talk her around. We had lived in a much smaller house before their marriage. I'm sure we'll be able to again. She squeezed my shoulder. Sleep well tonight, my girl. Tomorrow will be a big day. I let her go without another word. At least... I now understood why marriage was so important to her, yet I still couldn't help but feel it was her dream and not mine. I didn't want to marry a man just for his money. It wasn't right, nor was it fair to him or me. Not that I should have been worried anyway. No man came near me. Our futures depended entirely on Zelly. And that's the end of chapter two of Cinderella is Evil. Please do come back for chapter three next time. Many blessings. Wisteria. Energy. 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 Twister. 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 Twister.